galaxy is the closest to space. It's time to set off. Our achievements are stacked on top of each other. This is epic, right? I mean, th the media package had a video that sounded like it was narrated by Optimus Prime. But all jokes aside, we are taking a look at an Age Loser watch. We've seen one before. Uh, we're going to talk about that in a moment. But you can tell Age Loser is very excited about their newest release, the Age Loser Space Station. But here's the question. Does that mean we should be excited about this watch? Well, we're going to find out today. Let's take a look. It is 4.25 p.m. Let's get down to business. All right, so we've taken a look at one of these before, an Age Loser watch, not this specific space station, uh, but it does kind of have to do with space. We've taken a look at the Age Loser moon phase that technically wasn't really a moon phase, it was a watch that had a moon phase dial attached to where the date complication would be, so it kind of wasn't the most accurate moon phase, and a lot of people were really up in arms about that, and I get it. But it was a very nicely finished watch, and it had a lot to look at. But let's fast forward to today. What is this new offering, the Age Loser Space Station? Well, it's very, very interesting. It looks almost like a regulator watch with its single hand. It has an hour dial up just right under the 12 o'clock, kind of looks like a gear rotating there. Uh, then the minute would be that single minute hand, and then below that is actually a spinning uh, sub-second dial. But let's get into the specs, because this is actually a very, very interesting watch with some interesting kind of engineering in it. 40 hour power reserve coming from their caliber A3350 automatic, 21,600 VPH, uh, it's about plus minus 15 seconds every day. And it has this really interesting ball bearing system, almost reminds me of like Eterna's Eternomatic system. Uh, here's a quote from the website. We finally decided to use a ball bearing system made of special steel at the hour wheel to reduce the friction coefficient to 0.0001 by 0.0005. You nerds out there, tell me if it's cool. Case is made of 316L stainless steel, very standard. 42 millimeter case diameter by 48.8 millimeter lug to lug, uh, kind of a long boy here, 12.2 uh, millimeters thick, sapphire crystal and a 50 meter water resistance rating. Now the specs are interesting and the watch clearly has a very unique design. There are some things I really like about it and there are some things that they definitely need to work on. So let's go ahead and look at the pros and cons. Pros, number one, the finishing. Really, really nice actually. I'm really loving that kind of beveled edge on the bezel, uh, how the crystal just kind of goes into this very nicely uh, brushed look, super duper sharp. And we're taking a look at this colorway specifically, that deep blue and white. It's just a very nice combination, very pleasing to my eyes. And here's something I didn't think I would like initially, but in person, I really do like it. The deep set date window, again, with that kind of uh, louvered cut, it's, it's very interesting and it looks really cool. I thought that that deep set look would kind of make it look cheap, but I dig it. And when we flip the watch over, another pro would be that there is some nice decoration with that movement. Nothing crazy over the top longa detailing, but still very clean, very nice, pleasant to look at. But with the good comes the bad, so let's get into the cons. First con, the loom looks nice, like it's a nice hue of, of loom, uh, but it's dim. The next con would be that the crown is very tight and it's uh, not easy to get a distinguishable uh, crown setting. So, you know, here's one setting for the date, here's one setting for the time, you're gonna miss it probably. It takes me at least three different tries to get to the crown setting I want. So that's, that's an issue for sure. And then the final con, which I think is actually the biggest one, I'm gonna show you here. I'm gonna be holding onto the buckle and the other side of the strap and the case, okay? So nothing feasibly should be moving. And then this thumb is actually going to be covering the crown, okay? So nothing in here should really be moving except the rotor. But listen to this, I'm gonna put it up to my mic. I'm moving it up and down. So not, I'm not rotating the rotor here, I'm just moving it up and down. 
that movement isn't retained well into the case. Now, mind you, this is a prototype. I don't know how many other reviewers have seen this watch, but that's, I don't like that. So here's my conclusion. This Ageloser is a micro brand attempting to kind of be out there. Now, not that out there, like we're not talking Nove area. Uh, this is a bit more refined, but definitely unique and not perfect by any means. But the specs are good. The finishing is good. Don't like how the movement is rattling around in there. Don't like the kind of indistinguishable crown settings. That's a bummer. But if those things are all improved, we are left with a watch that, that isn't a cookie cutter watch when it comes to all these micro brands. Like for instance, one downfall in the micro, micro brand space, and we take a look at a whole lot of micro brands here, is a lot of them produce divers and a lot of divers look very similar. This is not a dive watch. This is a dress watch, which already sets it apart when it comes to the micro brand offerings out there. Uh, but this is also a very kind of out there design when it comes to dress watches. So I really do appreciate that, that they're trying something different, trying something truly unique. It, it's not quite there yet though. As, again, this is most likely a prototype media piece that has gone to a bunch of other people, but yeah, this example, not quite there. And there you have it, guys. Let me know what you think. Another Micro Brand Monday in the books. Uh, if you enjoyed this watch, you're interested in learning more, let me know. I'll leave a link uh, to their, I believe, it's a crowdfunded watch. I, I, I forgot which website, but I'll leave a link to it in the description below if you want to learn more about this watch. And uh, yeah, leave a comment. Again, like, comment, subscribe. Uh, subscribe to my other channel. Check out thetimetellershop.com, number one place to find affordable vintage luxury watches with some awesome Don't Start Watch Collecting merch. Uh, support the channel, guys. I will catch you on the next one. Stay happy, stay healthy, stay blessed. I'm Jory Goodman, the time teller, and always remember, I didn't invent time, I just tell it. Well, I, whoa, that kind of looked, it's gonna get me demonetized, actually.